Hello everybody and welcome to another box tail scoop. I'm Antonia and this is Noel and we are from Boxtail Soup Theatre Company. We are pleased actually that lots of you seem to enjoy, oh my goodness me, that wasn't even a word. Lots of you seem to enjoy our vlog last week about the frame making of the puppets and we wanted to continue on from that one this week because we actually had quite a few, a few questions about the next stage and what paper we use and all that sort of thing. So we thought we'd explain a little bit more about the next stage of the making process and mm -hmm. um, we've been busy this week with various different things as you can see hopefully we've made some progress on our fish our bird and um, this face as well here and we've got some new things to show you as well yeah we've done a few other bits and pieces as well in fact but we thought we'd concentrate on showing the development of what we were working on in in last week's uh, vlog so you'll remember this sort of angler fish kind of guy um, He's had a first cover, so we thought we'd show him first because he's not quite finished. He hasn't been smoothed off at the front and the inside hasn't been covered yet. Neither um, have these little teeth at the front here. I have this sneaking suspicion that Noel Byrne has left these, especially for me to cover. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> no, I covered these ones. You did I covered cover the ones at the front. Too, so um, most of the, the front has been covered, it has been given that first covering. So, you know, there's a couple of little bits here and there that haven't, but most of the, the front of it has been given an initial covering to, to make sure it holds its shape, it's solid, and then you can you can work on giving it a little bit more detail. So the materials that we use, um, we, I know we've mentioned this before, but we've never been too specific about it. So uh, we use torn up, as is demonstrated here, sugar paper. And it's important that you don't use something like a normal printer paper or notebook writing paper, as it's not gonna absorb the, the water and the PVA glue mix that you need to use with it. So it's a, a sugar paper, not too thick. It wants to be flexible enough. This we buy on a roll. Uh, Noel was laughing at me because I was gonna show you the roll of paper. And he was like, surely you don't need to show me I thought you would be able to paper. imagine paper being on a roll so without needing it to be it's, illustrated. It's paper on a roll, not not the kind of thing that you'd get in a pad really. Although sometimes you can get sugar paper in the pad, it's, it's usually a little bit flimsy. Yeah. So some kind of sugar paper on a roll, um, any colour that you like really, whatever colour you want the puppet to turn out in. And in fact, obviously also, we, we in fact spray paint some of the puppets if we want them to be a completely different colour anyway. Mm -hmm. So this kind of paper, and then you'll make a PVA water mixture. I would say it's probably, two parts PVA, one part water, roughly, as a mix. It wants to be the consistency of kind of single cream, really, when you're mixing it up. And that is, then you, you, you want to give your, the paper a smooth coat. You don't really want to dunk it in the glue no. mix. It doesn't want to be sodden. It wants to have a kind of even little coating of the PVA glue mixture on both sides of the paper. And in fact, you kind of want to take some of the excess glue off. Yep it doesn't want to be too wet yeah. and then you you can then start to attach that yeah we don't on. ever really dunk it in the glue we just kind of get some on our fingers and then you're just sort of working it over the surface of the paper exactly. like I said to make sure it's not too too wet because if it's too wet it, it tends to a it slightly discolors the paper sometimes and b it, it doesn't it doesn't go on as well does it? it's not as smooth mm -hmm. i will i always tear off the sharp the the actual the edge of the paper because I don't like any sharp edges. Noel is sometimes slightly less fastidious about that with the first covering, but I just find it gives a smoother finish and actually. Yeah. And also, it actually, it, that rough edge actually allows the paper to stick down more easily. Exactly. It's always where you've got a, a straight cut edge that it starts to peel up peel and away. It starts to come away. Yeah, that's a very good so Get rid of those if you can. Get rid of them. Um, and then you, you, you're building up in layers. You don't want to use too many layers if you can help it because obviously it starts to make the puppet heavy because even though it is just paper and glue and water, mm -hmm. layers and layers of it obviously is going to get heavier and heavier. But you'll also, you probably will need, you'll need a first coating and then you'll probably need a second one yeah, after and it's, that. It's actually surprisingly tough. Mm. If you're using, so long as you're not using, you know, like you said, like uh, printer paper or, or writing paper, this paper is just thick enough that once you've, I mean, here it's only had a single coating. You can see that there's nothing on the inside. Once you've put something on the inside as well, that's actually probably enough for it to be durable enough for us to use it in the show. Exactly. And the only reason why we would then put any more in is to smooth out any rough, rough edges. Yeah, or to add, or to add features. features or details mm. if you want to build something out, give something cheekbones or eyebrows or, you know, 
uh, any kind of contours or details that you haven't actually built onto the original frame. Exactly. And I think it's worth saying as well when you're, so we, the, the bird, this bird head is at a slightly slightly further along stage there might still be a little bit of smoothing out to do but because he doesn't have a moving mouth actually there was less to cover so he's covered all the way over um, and I've started to get a nice shape here with the eyes I think it's important to note that you'll over the frame obviously there'll be gaps between certain pieces of the frame mm -hmm. and you can choose whether to go smoothly from one to the other or to actually keep the kind of go concave as it were within the two gaps to give a, a certain feature so you can see on this I've, I've used the gaps sometimes to go in a little bit further and um, to give it a bit more character and I've pinched together the paper at the top here to give this ridge so there's various sculpting that you can do with the paper over the frame to give yourself extra mm. texture yeah and you can actually get quite a lot of detail out of yeah, it you once can. you start doing that and, and pinching little folds into the paper when it dries it holds them really well so actually you can get a surprising amount of detail even out of that first first, that first covering yeah absolutely um, it's also worth mentioning i think that because a couple of people had, had kind of asked about it and said that they might like to have a go at it if you don't have any sugar paper it, it is possible to do this with newspaper yes the only thing is that newspaper is obviously a lot thinner and a lot weaker so you'll probably find that you need at least two or three layers on each side and then obviously it's printed so you might then have to cover it with something else or Paint color it, it or yeah. or you might like the look of the newspaper sometimes i quite like the look of things when they're just just coated in newspaper yeah but, but it, yes, more it, it is possible to do it like that it's just it's not it's not as tough more layers and less glue actually that would be another tip if you are going to use newspaper really do kind of get the excess glue off it because otherwise mm. it goes into it just sort of dissolves, dissolves it, yeah. Um, and then this this head is a little further on, I suppose, uh, in this sort of sculpting process. When you're making a human face, I tend to be more fastidious about the smoothing mm. out. I, I am going to try and put like a, a, a decent close up of the texture on these at the end, because I think that's also really interesting. You managed to get such a nice smooth finish on these. Yeah, and I I'm think I'm not quite it, sure how you do uh, it. Magic. Yeah. Um, no, it really, it's just taking off the excess glue and making sure that you are very careful about how you how you attach them. Don't let it crease up. Try and make it smooth, uh, smooth over. And then obviously you can see I've put these eyelids in properly now and sculpted them round. You can tell that I haven't done the nose yet because it's a slightly different colour and it's a little shinier. Uh, and that's because I haven't haven't done that smooth over coating of it. And the inside of him is pretty much covered. I left a bar here because in fact we weren't sure whether we'd made his forehead too tall and until I'd finished covering him I didn't want to get rid of this in case we needed to cut him down so I'll probably now remove that because I think we're happy with the shape. This now it's had both coverings on as well is it's really tight. You know, it's, yeah. it's very solid yeah very uh, durable. So that's that's um, the very stages of that. It might also be worth mentioning as well that we we have actually recorded some time ago mm. uh, a couple of tutorials showing in detail how to make one of the frames and then how to do that first cover. We just haven't got around to editing them and putting them up on the channel. We promise we will do that soon. Um, if that's something you'd like to see, then obviously if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get a notification when that tutorial goes up. So maybe think about subscribing if, you're, uh, if you want to keep an eye out for that. And then uh, other things we've been doing, Noel made some rats. Yeah, so these guys <laughs> are... Um, sort of rat skeletons, really. Yeah, they're, they're very, very simple because really they're they're not kind of featured puppets they're they're just to kind of set the scene they're almost set dressing as it were just things to fill out the background of a scene so they've got little weights in the feet here um flexible bodies and then we wanted to give them the impression of being like little little rat skeletons so they've got just got you know little bits of tubing along the back to give a nice impression of a spine but they've got quite a nice uh, movement to them and they can go down you know onto onto all fours and then sort of re-up quite nicely. So they will then need the first coating of uh, papier-mâché yeah. on their heads and their little arms. They're kind of sweet. Yeah, little, little rats. And then I have been making something different, a different type of puppet, uh, which in fact I will just show you briefly, but we're going to focus on this kind of puppet next week, I think. So um, with this guy, who's got a thread on the back, who is totally different. He's made of 
old an old sheet, an old bed sheet exclusively, apart from the buttons for his eyes. So uh, next week I will be doing, we'll be talking about how how to make something like this. Um, it's really actually pretty simple and you could even do it if you didn't have a, I use a sewing machine, but if you don't have a sewing machine, you could actually hand stitch the whole thing if yeah. necessary. And all you do need is an old, old bed sheet or something similar um, and, and some buttons, I suppose, for, for the eyes. Mm. So we'll go into detail how we do that kind of one next week. Yeah, great. But uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with him. He's quite sweet. I think he's lovely. <laughs> so, there we are. I think that's that's it for this week. Yes, um, like we said, we've also been doing other little bits and pieces, but we'll 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 move on to, to uh, some of that next time. For now, thank you very much for watching, and uh, if you've enjoyed it, please consider giving us a thumbs up, giving us a like, leaving us a comment maybe, or possibly even subscribing. As I said, that would be great. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks.